Uh, I am Senator Tice's chief of staff, and she would love to be here today, but she has a committee that she's chairing, so I appreciate uh, having the opportunity to speak on her behalf. Senator Tice serves as a member of the Senate Oversight Committee, and through hours of testimony over many a months, she heard firsthand accounts that the people's faith in our election process has eroded. The reforms before the committee today seek to make Michigan's elections more secure, more accurate, and more trustworthy, while at the same time streamlining the voters' participation in the process. As you are aware, back in 2018, the residents of Michigan adopted Proposal 3, also known as Promote the Vote. One of the provisions contained within this constitutional amendment was the right for an individual voter to use an absentee ballot for any reason. Senate Bill 285 will help us fix a glaring loophole in the absentee ballot application process, which currently does not require proof of identity to request an absentee ballot via the mail. Via the mail is an important distinction as the online process requires a voter to verify their identity. The substitute the committee adopted today would require an individual to provide reasonable proof of identity when completing their absentee ballot application. Reasonable proof of identity means a voter would need to provide their driver's license number, their Michigan personal identification card number, the last four of their social security number, or attach a copy of a photo ID. An individual could also present proper identification for election purposes in person at their local clerk's office as they turn in their application. If none of the forms of identity of identification are provided or available, a voter would be issued a provisional ballot. They would then have six days following the election to provide a proper form of ID in order to ensure that their ballot is tabulated. Senate Bill 285 also provides our local clerks with access to the most current Secretary of State database that would allow them to confirm an individual driver's license number, state ID number, or the last four of a Social Security number to help them in the verification. Senator Tice firmly believes that verifying an individual voter's identity, whether voting in person or using an absentee ballot, is the best way to protect our election process from voter fraud. With the convenience of online services and the increased use of mail applications due to the Secretary of State's mass mailing of these applications, it is now possible for an individual to register to a vote apply for a ballot, receive the ballot, fill it out, and send it back in without ever seeing the inside of a clerk's office or a voting location. There is no doubt that requiring identi identification verification is critical to ensuring the integrity of our election process moving forward. Requiring an individual to provide proof of their identity is not creating a personal security risk, and it is not voter suppressant. In fact, this bill, along with others in the package, seek to ensure that the residents of Michigan who are legally eligible to have the photo ID that they need to not only vote but to live life. And Senator Tice is committed to ensuring that any individual in Michigan who needs an ID gets one. As we all know, an individual is unable to purchase alcohol, open a bank account, apply for programs like food stamps or welfare, social security, buy a house or rent an apartment without a photo ID. Oftentimes, you even need a photo ID to adopt a, pot, adopt a pet or buy cold medicine. The changes contained within the S-1 to Senate Bill 285 will simply help us treat voters that are voting via absentee ballot the same as in-person voters, while helping us to restore and ensure the integrity in our election process for years to come. Back in 2018, when the, res the residents of Michigan had three major ballot proposals before them, Proposal 1 created the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act, and in total was over 6,500 words long. Proposal 2, amending our state constitution, was over 3,100 words long. That one created the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission. Proposal 3, again at, known as Promote the Vote, also amending our state constitution, was over 3,500 words long. Under current law, ballot initiatives are boiled down and summarized in 100 words. Think about that. The voters are voting on ballot proposals over 6,500 words long, and they get 100 words. 
These hundred words are all the voters of Michigan get to read when voting on major policies that will impact our state and even amending and changing our state's constitution. After an election, it's common for us to hear things like, I didn't know that's what the proposal did. I didn't know the proposal could be changed by the legislature. I was unaware the proposal had that many changes in it. As residents are frustrated and flabbergasted when they learn more about the details of the ballot proposals they just adopted. I think we would all agree that the facts are clear. With the passage of Proposal 3, more and more voters will be casting their ballots using an absentee ballot from home. The Senator believes that you all would agree, and it's vitally important for the voters of Michigan to have all of the information before them when voting on ballot initiatives. Senate Bill 307 seeks to ensure that our residents are fully informed before casting their ballots by mandating that a full copy of the ballot proposal be included with their absentee ballots as they are mailed out. Senator Tice believes that the people of Michigan should have the ability to know what they're voting on. They should not have to rely on a 100-word summary that can potentially, at worst, be inaccurate or oftentimes misleading, and at best, be insufficient to help people fully understand the scope of the changes being proposed. The current system is set up in a way that without internet access, it is virtually impossible for a voter to find the complete text of a ballot proposal, leaving them dependent on the simple 100-word summary. This bill will have the biggest impact on Michigan's most vulnerable residents, seniors, and those living across our state without internet access. The Senator has looked and we have yet to find a newspaper that has printed the totality of proposals for residents to read. It's true, they oftentimes print the summary, but not the full text. 